So finally, after 18 months, the time has come to take collection of the new boat. Um, I've driven down from Noosa to the Port Stephens area, just been catching up with some friends for a few days. And then Josh Batterson from Edgewater Boats Australia is going to drive the boat up from Sydney and meet me here, a place called Raymond Terrace, just near Newcastle. So I just pulled over near Heatherbray Pies. I go and get myself a good old Aussie pie. And uh, Josh should be here in about 40 minutes. And we'll finally get to see this boat that I've been waiting so long for. Uh, pretty exciting times. Uh, it's going to be great to get back on the water. Got some good weather this weekend. So I'm going to drive the boat straight back to Noosa, get all my fishing gear on it, get it set up, and hopefully get on the water for Saturday and Sunday and give it a good test run. Here it comes, here it comes. <laughs> Finally, 18 months later, there he is. He actually exists. What a beast. Look at this thing. Where am I going to fit that, mate? Not my problem now. <laughs> Finally, after oh, I got too many cameras oh, too going, many mate. Cameras. Finally, after all these years. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. How are you? Good, mate. Good. It's good. So, 18 months later, here we are. Finally, a new boat. It's like the longest pregnancy ever, and here she is. I reckon I prefer one of these sorts of babies to the babies you've got, mate. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. I, after the last two nights, I have to agree with you. <laughs> So this is Josh Batterson from uh, Edgewater Boats Australia. I've been dealing with Josh now for what, seven or eight years. Yeah, yeah, but we've longer, but we've but never actually met in person yeah, so because so. the last boat I picked up from Sydney and he was uh, I don't know on some luxurious holiday somewhere what in the it? Bahamas. Oh, I, yeah, I don't well, know. I've been to the Bahamas so many times. That <laughs> is definitely true. No, I reckon he was catching the snapper off somewhere. Yeah. But um, so here we are. So Josh has been amazing to deal with the whole process, both boats actually. You've been. Uh, very transparent and very uh, patient, I would say the words are. Yeah, oh, I think you've been just as patient, don't worry. Yeah, but i got the easy job, mate. I've got to sit and wait for the boat. You know, you've you got to deal with all the bullshit. you to that too, though. Well, that's true. That so easy. here it is, the Edgewater 208cc. Definitely a step up from the, uh, the 188. And um, it's going to give me a lot more fishing options. She's a big boat, eh? Yeah. But it's not, like, it's not massive, but it's... It's good, good size. Yeah. yeah, it's gonna fit in my driveway wonderfully. Right, we're gonna get this guy hooked up and uh, I've got a 10 hour drive ahead. I think I've got to um, drop off some of Josh's contraband on the way somewhere. Yeah, 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 exactly. It's kind of helping pay for the boat. Pay for the fuel. Right, we'll see you in Noosa. So, as you can see behind me, finally made it back to Noosa with the boat. Uh, good 10 hour drive, pretty straight run. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't have any lights or brakes on the trailer as the uh, trailer pin was uh, a 12 pin adapter and my car is a seven pin. So I didn't actually think that it would be different. But anyway, we made it safe and the boat fits nicely under the carport. Um, and now I'm just gonna kind of run through the boat and some of the features that I've had installed on it um, before I start customizing a few things and adding all my bits and pieces on top of what's already been installed. So I'll start at the front and work my way back. So starting at the front end here, we have a Minn Kota Tarova 36 volt, 112 pound, 72 inch shaft electric motor. It's good to have a brand new one. Let's see how long it lasts before we have any problems with it. Uh, we've got a nice deep anchor well, which is great in here. Um, so I'm gonna put some anchor open there for when I'm anchoring up in shallow water. Got a proper bowsprit, which is pretty handy. It's pretty chunky. One thing I noticed on this boat is it's it's a lot bigger and chunkier than the 188. It's definitely just that next size up in everything. Um, looking back, got a nice T-top there, spread a light in the front, radio box underneath there, nice wide low windscreen which is perfect, heaps of protection, it's a big console. Uh, got a collapsible seat there, I can always put an Esky in front of that if I want. Sit there and have my lunch. Got a nice kill tank up the front here, pretty similar to the last boat, a little bit deeper. And better plug system on this one and drain. Not gonna get too much stuff stuck in there. So that looks good, I'm happy with that. Really nice high gunnels, nice padding around the sides. Um, got some good rod storage under here. Also got 
raw water intake there for deck wash. Uh, foot rail, which is handy. Uh, really wide gunnels on this boat, which is great. And as we come down to the console, you'll notice I've got two Simrad NS, NS12s, NS12 Evo 3Ss. Uh, basically, I'm going to run GPS and probably one transducer on one and another transducer on the other. Um, I had two one kilowatt transducers fitted, uh, a SS175 medium and an SS175 high wide. So I get the best of bottom coverage and also top water for the Pelagics. Uh, Mercury four inch control panel, Simrad autopilot, Lenko limited space trim tabs, which I'll show you why in a minute. And standard uh, Mercury control, um, yeah, really big console, massive top here. I'll be able to put a camera bag up here to put my GoPros and stuff in. And it slopes backwards, which is good, so stuff doesn't come flying off the console when you're moving at 30 knots. Radio box up the top here. Uh, BNG, VHF, uh, high quality VHF radio. Better than I would normally spend, but safety is paramount. I'll be doing wider trips on this boat. Got some good rocket launches up here on the T-top. Another spreader light and some rod holders on the back of the seat console. Really good storage box here, which I can fit quite a few of these Sistema storage uh, containers with all my tackle and lures and stuff for the day. And then I had a custom bait board made up by Baitmate. Um, it's an 800 mil wide. I've got two 100 mil drawers, 100 mil height and deep drawers and they comfortably fit these Sistema boxes so I can get at least two in there, some leader, another two in the bottom compartment uh, and that kind of, that kind of, yeah, that fixes me up for all the storage of my terminal tackle for any given day and any extra I can put down in the console. Um, there was an Esky that goes under this seat here, this one here, but I'm going to take that out and put two, two slide out. 45 litre eskies and I'll put that one down inside the console. Got a walk through transom here, swim ladder. Uh, we've also got a fresh water shower, uh, heaps of room on the back there, access to the motor. And on the other side here, we have a nice deep plumb live well in a great position, perfect spot. Um, once again, we've got another seat here which flips out or I can just put an Eskiel on the back here. Loads of room in the transom compared to the last boat. There's a good, you know, 1200 in there. Heaps of standing room. Uh, more rod holders and storage on the other side here. So yeah, we've got a ton of, a ton of rod storage, a ton of gear storage. And yeah, especially down inside that console, we've got stacks of room in there. So I can really, might even put a, a shelving system in here at some stage. Um, see how we go. So if we look here you can see that I'm charging the 36 volt lithium battery for the uh, Minn Kota electric motor. It's a charger there. Uh, now these come from the same supplier that supplied the Minn Kota and the reason I've got, uh, the reason I've done that is because they've got less chance of voiding the warranty if anything goes wrong. So some lithium batteries aren't compatible with some electric motors so this avoids any uh, potential issues that may arise because as we all know electric motors aren't the most reliable things and I don't want to have any arguments with suppliers with regards to warranty issues as you can see very neat wiring job that um, Joshi has done and the guys that installed the motor it's great then we've got um, the uh, autopilot steering setup here a couple of 12 volts, uh, cranking out battery, and then a deep cycle battery for my main batteries. And got some uh, Namiya networking set up there. And there's a Sonic hub set up there for my stereo speakers. But yeah, everything's really neat. Kind of sits behind this curtain up here. And uh, yeah, pretty happy. Lots of room in the console there. I'll be able to put a Bunch of um, yeah, safety, some some uh, storage stuff, maybe an extra esky. So yeah, lots of room in there. Okay, the serious end of the boat. 
I have fitted a Mercury 225 large DTS with a Mercury three blade inertia prop. Um, the 225 is not the maximum horsepower this boat's rated to. It's rated to 250, but uh, Josh, the importer, has brought in a lot of these boats and fitted a lot out, and he believes the 225 is the best balance motor for this boat. So I'm trusting his judgment. Um, so here's my Lenko limited space trim tabs, which I've fitted, and the reason why I did that instead of the full size ones is because I have a swim ladder here which just clears it uh, by about an inch in there so apparently I read up that these limited space trim tabs were good for boats up to eight meters and this is a 6.25 meter boat so um, Josh has tested them and tells me they work fantastic um, I also got some Hella Marine squid lights um, I think from memory they're about 3,000 lumens um, they look really good really solid so they'll give me a bright blue or a bright white light off the back of the boat in case I want to do some squidding at night under here we have two transducers two one kilowatt transducers MR 175s one's a medium and one is a high wide as you can see there they are installed so that there is no interference coming from the front of the boat really nice neat job there so that should give me seriously clear reading at all speeds so before i put the boat on the water for the first time i decided to get a protective wrap put on so i've brought it out to a place called pomona about 20 minutes from noosa to a business called graphic wraps and uh, craig has been putting the wrap on over the last 24 hours so let's go and have a look looks fantastic where are you Craig very subtle gray color against the white which is exactly what I want nothing too obvious I love it there we go you can see the contrasting color there at the join very subtle gray that'll just keep it from uh, scuffing on the sides when you're pulling up to pontoons and all those types of uh, situations fish banging against the side of the boat looks great just got to get the rego numbers on and we are ready to roll here he is craig from graphic wraps at pomona mate it looks fantastic it does it went on really well yeah it, um, it was a good fun boat to wrap actually excellent it's exactly the color that i wanted so when i was coming towards it i couldn't even notice it was like Oh my god it looks white yeah <laughs> but it's great it's exactly what i wanted no it's really good yeah there's perfect a, color there's a really nice subtle color change on there and yeah, yeah yeah i like it no it's absolutely spot on i was a bit kind of just you know can't tell sometimes when yeah you see the color but now that it's on there it's exactly the the it's contrast i wanted for your rego oh just in there mate just in there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah let's do it yeah i think craig's done this a couple more times than i have i reckon it took me about two hours of thinking about it <laughs> And that is how it's done. I think I do it different every single time. <laughs> yeah, right. Is that just so you don't get bored? <laughs> well, it's just managing where the wrinkles are going, yeah, really. Yeah, of course. Yeah. This is a bit of a weird boat yeah, with its, um, yeah, the angles. all the contours that it's got. You little cheeky bugger. Yeah, got the evidence on that. <laughs> it's on camera. <laughs> That's it. Can't go out of anything these days, mate. <laughs> Beautiful. Right, oh, no, champagne bottle, smash, there it is. Dented the boat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't worry, I'm sure I will at some stage. Job complete, wrapped, regoed. Now we just gotta give Craig some money, of course, and then um, go and get the trailer registered and we are on the water. So hopefully there'll be some blood on the deck soon. So I had a bit of a delay between the boat getting wrapped and uh, the trailer getting registered so I haven't actually hit the water yet, it's been a few days. Uh, unfortunately Queensland Transport didn't include in their checklist on their website um, any information about presenting import documents for the trailer. So 
uh, had a little bit of an argument with them in regards to their lack of um, disclosed information. Um, couldn't find any information on their website in regards to their uh, legislation that stated that I had to provide those documents. But anyway, a few days later, I got hold of those documents, uh, returned to Queensland Transport, and everything is registered. So I'm legal to go on the water. Uh, just made a few small modifications to the boat before I uh, go for first uh, first mission. Um, as you know, I love adding things to the boat just to make uh, my fishing more efficient. So I'm just going to show you a few bits and pieces that I've done, um, you know, just to give you some ideas or things to think about when you're setting up your own boat. Okay, so the first couple of things I have added to the boat are at the rear end of the boat at the workstation. I have added a um, tool workstation here and I haven't actually screwed that, I've just sticker flexed it and it's pretty pretty solid, I don't think it's moving anywhere but that gives me really easy access to my tools. The reason I like to put it here and not up here is in case the tools come out and drop on the floor, um, there's a bit of weight to these pliers and I don't want them cracking the gel coat or doing any damage to the boat so the lower they are to the floor, um, yeah the more I like it, the less damage it can be done. Uh, easy access there, I can lean over, grab any of those tools really easily. Second thing I've done here is I've temporarily put this kind of basket under the under the uh, bait board and cabinet here because I like to put my used lures and hooks and stuff in it for the day and I can just unclip it, take it off, wash it all down. I've drilled some holes drain holes in the bottom of it so water won't stay in there. It's pretty secure. I'll probably get a more heavy duty one as time goes by, but that'll do for now. Uh, there's a bit of a lack of drink holders on this boat, so I added one of these Robo Cups, which you can get from good old AFN online. Billy will sell you some of those. Um, they're removable, they just clamp on the side there. Um, great for putting a couple of cups in, so that'll be handy. And I've got my drawers set up here with the tackle easy to get to, hooks, plastics, and then some leader there, bits and pieces in the second drawer. I have terminal tackle, pre-made rigs, etc., and jig heads. So all that stuff is really easy for me to get to whenever I want. And then in the storage cabinet under the console, I have a bunch of other trays, some lures, some lead, bigger lead here, had a little space here so I went to one of the second hand stores and got an old Tupperware container and uh, converted that into my lead storage and a bunch of leader rolls in here for the heavier stuff when I need to get to it. So that pretty much covers everything, uh, all my basics and then down under the gunnel here I have, uh, similar to the last boat, I've got my uh, gaff and my net, landing net and then I've got the raw water intake is in a different spot there. So I've got my deck wash nice and tidily tucked under there. So once again, everything's clear off the floor and that gives me plenty of fishing space. And one other minor detail I've added to the boat here is at the back through the walkthrough transom, there's a little storage hatch. And inside here, there was just like a, um, a basic kind of container so what I've done here is I've put a front on it here and turned it into a little bin which I can put bits of plastic um, you know lure packaging and that sort of stuff in there and just empty it at the end of each day so pretty convenient little spot here at the back of the boat easy to reach from inside the transom and uh, just making use of that space it's never enough rod holders on a boat and I'm amazed at the amount of boats that don't have rod holders in the front half of the boat. reason I put them here, two reasons. I've got one here and one on the other side, so both port and starboard. And the reason I put them there is in case I'm nosed, in case the nose of the boat is pointing into the wind and the current is going against the wind. So then my lines are going to end up at the front of the boat. Okay, so that gives me a perfect angle. So the other reason I have these rod holders at the front of the boat is in case I'm fishing solo and I want to de-hook a fish, I bring the fish down and I put it into the kill tank, straight in there, and then I can put the rod in the rod holder, okay, and it makes it a lot easier for me to handle the fish. I can put the rod in there, open the bar arm, pull some line out, and while the fish is in here in the kill tank, I can de-hook it, and get that out of the way and deal with the fish okay so 
makes it a lot easier when you've got a rod holder just to put a rod into instead of it lying on the deck and potentially getting damaged. Down in the console here, as well as adding my life jackets sign, which is mandatory in Queensland, I have tons of room and I haven't really customized this yet, but I'm just keeping it simple. I've got a tub here with extra life jackets, some mooring ropes, my fire extinguisher. Uh, I've got a bag just sitting behind that with all my safety gear, EPIRB flares, uh, V sheet and first aid kit, tool kit, and also a bag here of extra tackle. And as you can see, I've got plenty more room in here. I can stack things up on top there, under there. Massive lithium battery for the electric motor, but there's still heaps of space in here. So lots of room, not even sure what I'm gonna do with all that space yet, but uh, I'm sure when I go camping, um, I'll be able to fill it up with some crates and, and, uh, and bits and pieces. Now, if you've had a trailer before with electric breakaway brakes or electric over hydraulic brakes, um, you may have had some issues before. And the main issue I've had before is when water gets inside the units. They tell you that they're sealed, uh, the actual breakaway units, but I've had some issues years ago um, with a particular brand where the seals weren't amazing, the water got in, fried the circuit board, and I had a brake lock up uh, on the middle of the gateway bridge in Brisbane in peak hour traffic, and it was pretty dangerous. So. I'm going to prevent this happening this time by putting covers on top of the batteries and also on the brake unit itself. Um, so what I did is basically got a couple of old battery boxes that were lying around, cut them up a little bit, got them shaped and, uh, and I've put them over the top of both the, the dual battery unit and the breakaway system itself with some cable ties um, and that'll probably last quite a few years or last longer than if I left the units out um, in any kind of conditions. I'm under a carport here but they can still get salt water, rainwater, all sorts of stuff on them. So definitely an idea to protect those units uh, and save yourself some dramas in the long run. So I've still got a few bits and pieces to come for the boat, but um, yeah, that's a pretty pretty basic rundown on everything that I've got on it and things I've added to it. Um, so yeah, the next thing to do is put it on the water and test everything out and see if everything's working. So let's get down there. We've got uh, some pretty average weather tomorrow, but Sunday is the day. So yeah, maiden voyage and I'm looking forward to it. All right, just getting ready for the maiden voyage in the new boat. Got Ryan here to help me today. Uh, Pop 100 litres of fuel in. I've got no idea what uh, fuel, how much fuel this boat uses yet. So, looking forward to getting on the water and testing it out. It's about quarter past five in Noosa. Got to go and look for some snapper. Um, where me and Ryan have been catching them the last couple of trips. So, yeah, pretty excited to get on the water and test this baby out. And see what it can do. Fortunately, a drama-free launch, which is always good, especially with a new boat. It's always a little bit of a nervous moment, making sure nothing goes wrong. I always like to be driving away from the boat ramp, leaving everyone there with all the hassles of the world. Um, so here we go, We're looking pretty good. Uh, got a bit of a sunrise about to happen over here, Noosa River. All the electronics are working well. Got the two Simrads. Sounders are reading super clear here in the river, which is always a good sign. Um, just got to get used to the new electronics. Great layout, super easy to see. Ryan's looking pretty happy there. Excited, right. Ryan? Oh yeah. So, um, all right, let's give it some stick and see how this thing goes. So yeah, good run out um, to our first spot. Pretty impressed with the Mercury 225. It's got amazing pickup. I wouldn't say the maximum speed is what I thought it would be. I did push the throttle to the max um, going into the swell for a good 45 seconds to a minute and I got it up to 35 knots. But yeah, I actually would have expected about another 
five or six knots to be honest maybe in a different conditions uh, i'll try it in the river a bit later and see what i can get it up to but uh beautifully smooth motor super good pickup like out of the hole it's unbelievable um yeah really impressed super quiet and yeah the boat hums along so yeah pretty impressed so far okay so as you can see Minn Kota's holding pretty well it's a 36 volt 112 pound with a 72 inch shaft we are pointing into a westerly wind with a nor'east swell coming from behind um, yeah it's holding fine um, that's not not a real challenging condition I'd say the breeze is about five to ten knots so it's not pushing it hard um, but yeah it's holding pretty easily at the moment which is always good Uh, we're just getting away from a packet boat. It's just come out a little bit wider to a wreck. And I've just dropped the jig down. And a couple of hops. And we're onto a pretty quality fish. Bit of a good run at first. I've got to say it's probably a cobia. By the way it's behaving. It's coming up fast now. I was a bit angry at first. Bit of drag. Just watch, I might come under the boat there, right? Bit of slow morning so far, the fish. Yeah, it's got to be a co, I reckon. Yes, it's not a bad one either. Oh, he's only a small one. I saw the boat and did a runner. Result of dropping down a 80 gram jig on a wreck, didn't take long, a couple of hops, and a reasonable size fish. Second fish, second keeper on the boat this morning, got a pearly earlier, and uh, there we go, cobia. No snapper yet, but I reckon if we keep looking, we might eventually find some a little bit later. He's got himself something on the livey. You can see it on the sound, you lost it. Oh, how's that feel, mate? <laughs> Gone like last week's paycheck, mate. <gasps> oh, I'm looking forward to seeing Ryan's knot because <laughs> he lost a he lost a good snap the other day to a dodgy knot. So you know we're, about to, we're about to have a knot a knot inspection. I know it is gonna be. Oh, what have you done this time, Ryan? All right, let's have a look. Let's have a look. Oh no, just pulled the hook. Okay, well, you're off the hook as far as the knots. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan fished there and a little bit of a burly, burly trail. Bit of whale on the <laughs> Nuggets. Bit of whale of a time, mate. Look at that, he's breaching. <laughs> the Ryan fishes breached and dropped the load. <laughs> I might just leave you out here, mate. <laughs> Pretty awesome conditions, total glass out, but the fishing is very quiet. We are marking fish on the bottom, but they're just um, not biting. So, a couple of bites before on the wreck. Uh, just watching Ryan's deposit float away. <laughs> <laughs> Some nuggets for the central nugget bank. Anyway, a bit of burly. Oh, I'm going to sit at the front just to enjoy the tranquility for a while, and then we'll go have another look around. So, when I'm fishing for snapper, um, the sound is really important. I'm always looking for certain types of colour and shapes on the sounder which uh, resonate with what I think would be snapper. And I think coming through the sounder at the moment there looks like there's some fish under a bait school feeding and there's a good possibility that they could be snapper. So we'll get some baits out and see if we can pull some of the fish out of it. Quiet in the middle of the day. We put liveys down. I don't want them. So I just thought I'd sneak down slowly a lightly weighted 
fresh pilly. And I reckon I've got a good snapper here. Here we go, first good knobby in the boat. It is. They're sitting on the bottom, smooching away, not eating. And there you go. Present a nice, pretty much unweighted pilchard down. Fresh pilchard actually, ones we caught before at the wreck. And the result, a good snapper. Beauty. It's a pretty simple rig there. A, a fresh pilchard on a set of gangs. Very small running ball sinker. It's a bit of a fly on the gangs. I'm using these LCAT gangs that come with a bit of a attractant there. So nothing kind of technical there. Really light ball sink. I'm just feeding it down into 50 meters of water. And that's what attracted that last snapper. Same technique then. Feeding that pilly out. Another good fish. Oh yep. This time we've got a nice lipper on the bottom. Grassy sweet lip. Really good chewing fish. Float lining those pilchers down and starting to get some quality fish. Ryan just got one on the other side a bit, a bit bigger than this one before. And uh, yeah, middle of the day when everything's dead quiet and now we're actually starting to get some quality eating fish on board. It's like three and three drops. So got a bit of a bite heading into the top of this tide here, which is about two o'clock. So another two hours of uh, running water. We should be able to catch a few fish. Come on, gotta be here. Every time I turn the camera off, I get a bite. A bit camera shy. Come on. Definitely in the zone. There's a bit more run now as we get closer to this tide. So definitely having to let a bit more line out. And of course, as always happens, as soon as you turn the camera off, I brought that bait back up a little bit. Oh, dropped it back down. Another five meters. And a good hookup. This one feels pretty snappery again. Definitely all swimming in that zone at the moment, about five to 10 meters off the bottom. There's a little bit more run now, so I just had to let a little bit more line out just to get it in the right spot. Oh yeah, that's a good one. Just getting a good bite, yeah, another good snap. Beautiful, that's what we want. All around the same kind of three, three to four kilo size. Beautiful. Around that sort of 60, 60 centimeter mark, which is a good size snapper. Perfect eating size. It's great, how good is this? First trip in the new boat and getting some quality fish on board. There's nothing better than that. Well, the bite has well and truly gone quiet after that kind of little scurry we had of a few fish. We've got five kind of good fish there, a few snapper, a couple of lipper, um, but we're on a tide turn now, middle of the day or early afternoon. So it's definitely a lot of fish on the sounder, but nothing's biting. So we're gonna call that day, head in. Uh, so it's been a pretty successful first uh, mission on the boat, maiden voyage. No major issues, everything's pretty good. Couple of small things just to sort out on the boat. Um, but yeah, otherwise pretty good. So I'm driving the boat back to the Noosa Bar at the moment in a pretty average sea. We've got a nor'easter blowing about 10 to 15 knots and I'm kind of going with it back home. Uh, the boat is driving amazing. So I'm just gonna do some bit of footage just to show you how well the boat's performing in a pretty kind of average sea. Uh, we've been gunning at around 30 knots and haven't even got a drop on us. So I know it's a following sea, but even side on, it's performing really well. So we'll just uh, hit it and uh, let show you what it can do. Out of the hole in like a second. Unbelievable, the power from start. This motor is unreal. Heating it up. 
go a little bit side on. Impressive. It's a really different hull to the 188. Um, I couldn't go that speed, nowhere near that speed in this sort of ocean. I'd probably be going 15 to 18 knots. And here I'm doing 28 to 30, and it's handling it no worries at all. So pretty happy with the performance so far. Okay, second trip out in the new Edgewater 208cc. Noosa, beautiful day. Got a little bit later this morning so I can get a bit better light when I'm uh, cruising with the boat just to show you the acceleration power and the different uh, ways it handles. Um, it's about 8.30am. I've got uh, two hours after a high tide. And I'm just going to steam to the river mouth now and uh, cross the bar. Uh, beautiful day. Hopefully pretty good conditions out there. So I'm just going to try and um, yeah, find some snapper, play around with my uh, electronics uh, again. and. Um, yeah, have some fun on the water and just uh, see what else this boat can do. So I'm pretty impressed with the Mercury 225 and how fast it gets out of the hull. Uh, I'm just going to wait for my surroundings to be clear here and then I'll uh, get her up on the plane and show you what she can do. As you can see, one second and we're out of the hull and on the plane. Acceleration's incredible. Literally zero to 29 knots in a few seconds. Okay, I'm just coming towards the Noosa bar here. And there is a little bit of swell on the bar. About 1.3 to 1.5 meter easily. So I'm just gonna stop and have a bit of a look at the sets before I go through. There are a couple of, oh yeah, there's a couple of pumping at the back there. So I need to time my set here pretty well to get through this one. You've got to be cautious, so I've come unstuck on this bar before, so I'm just going to take my time watching a set, wait for the gap, and then power through that channel, which I've been going through on the North Shore here. Right, there's been a set, so I'm going to go now. Across the Noosa bar. So the boat's nice and clean, under a cover, under a carport, and so far after the first couple of trips, um, yeah, it's definitely exceeded my expectations. Um, the Mercury 225's got definitely more power than I expected for a boat of this size and weight. Um, the boat handles extremely well in conditions that I would expected would have expected to get a little bit uh, probably wetter or not to be able to go as fast. Um, and yeah, it's a really easy boat to handle by myself. Um, loading and unloading off the float on skid trailer is extremely easy, uh, even in a strong current and in a windy condition. 
And so, yeah, I guess in summary, um, yeah, the 208 CC's definitely exceeded my expectations so far, and it's a pleasure to fish from, a pleasure to drive, and yeah, looking forward to getting back on the water and, you know, using it some more.